Sunny has learnt a mastery of ancient Chinese boxing, he is clad in 404 lives, and for every person he kills he tattoos a bar on his body, simply because he doesn't want to forget how many lives he has carried, and in this castle he holds a significant position, he is the chief scissors officer of the lords, and he is known as the prince regent. One day, sent by the lord to inspect a convoy of laborers, Sunny discovers them brutally murdered on the roadside, some as young as a few years old, using an 8x scope, he surveys the area, in the distance, he notices a group of hired mercenaries with menacing expressions, when questioned about the killings, their leader is uncooperative and orders his men to attack, Sunny effortlessly dodges their blows with elegant footwork and delivers powerful punches in return, executing a 360 degree mid-air spin, he incapacitates the leader with a seven wound strike, then finishes him off by breaking his neck, the rest of the mercenaries, seeing their leader defeated, surrounds Sunny, who uses his Chinese martial arts skills to fend them off, however, the leader, showing some skill, manages to land a few blows on Sunny. After a back-and-forth battle of punches and kicks, Sunny exploits a vulnerability in the leader's defense, unleashing a brutal combination that ends the leader's life. Opening the wooden crate, Sunny finds a young boy inside, who tries to escape but is knocked out by Sunny's capture rope. The boy, M.K., reveals that he was captured by another lord, the widow, to uncover the truth. Sunny brings him back to the castle. M.K. is bullied by the other soldiers, and as he watches his blood spill, his eyes turn from white to black, Ajax prepares to attack, but M.K. swiftly dodges and delivers a powerful spinning kick, sending Ajax crashing into the wall, his identity does seem complex. During the day, Sunny brings M.K. into the city, the people here are all Clippers soldiers, he shows M.K. around the castle, where he will stay from now on, the young soldiers are undergoing training to become the next generation of Clippers, however, M.K. does not want to stay here. Sunny offers him a second option, a life of hard labor in the fields until death. At this moment, Lord Quinn begins a welcoming ceremony for the newcomers. It resembles a large-scale brainwashing event, and all the young people are swayed by Quinn's passionate speech, pledging their loyalty to him. After the ceremony, Sunny brings M.K. to Quinn. It is clear that M.K. does not know why the widow has put a bounty on him. Quinn instructs Sunny to keep a close eye on the boy, Quinn's son, Gabriel appears he is unhappy with Sonny's recent actions, as handling the affairs of the mercenaries is usually his job, when he learns that the widow is behind it, he is eager for his father to attack the widow, however, there are seven barons in the badlands, Sonny warns that if they start a war without cause, they will be surrounded by the other barons, and the consequences will be dire, Quinn is also reluctant to start a war, M.K. is brought to the training ground, where the troublemaker Ajax suddenly approaches and tries to take M.K.'s necklace for himself, Seeing his mother's keepsake being stolen, M.K. becomes enraged and throws punches at Ajax, and the two begin to wrestle. Sunny intervenes and separates them. Upon seeing the pattern on the necklace, it seems to trigger a memory in him. This scene is witnessed by Gabriel, and M.K. also gains his first friend, Bale. Sunny quickly returns to his room, where he also has a pocket watch with the same pattern. On the other side, Lord Quinn prepares to marry Jade, an arrangement orchestrated by his main wife. Lydia, despite outward agreement, Lydia is deeply unwilling, Quinn has been plagued by headaches lately, and Lydia suggests that their son, Gabriel, should help him more with the internal affairs, however, Quinn is not optimistic about Gabriel, feeling he is not ready yet, they have argued over this issue more than once, at night, Sonny secretly visits his girlfriend Vale's house, upon learning that Vale is pregnant, Sonny is at a loss because their actions could lead to execution, however, Vale believes that beyond the cruelty, there is still a peaceful place, she hopes Sonny can take her and the child away from here, but Sonny does not believe these rumors, upset, he goes to the tattoo shop to record his day's killings, meanwhile, MK has just finished washing up and is preparing to rest when he is suddenly attacked by Ajax, it seems that MK's body harbors immense energy, and when provoked, he delivers a powerful kick to Ajax, sending him crashing into a glass wall. The shattered glass is caught mid-air by MK and then flung at Ajax's eyes. Sunny witnesses this and, when MK collapses in exhaustion, he urges MK to tell the truth. If Quinn finds out about this, MK will be tortured. MK reveals that he has had this ability since he was young. Whenever he bleeds, he transforms, and when he comes to, there are casualties around him. He and his mother were forced to leave home because they heard of a sorcerer who could cure his condition. However, he was captured by mercenaries on the way and separated from his mother. It seems that this is the reason why the widow has a bounty on him. After showing his pocket watch, Sonny learns that MK's hometown is Isra. Sonny asks how he can get there, but MK has already forgotten the way home. He hopes Sonny can return the necklace to him. 
but Sunny reveals that Gabriel has taken it. He warns MK not to act rashly, as it could cost him his life. The next morning, after hearing this news, Sunny starts to consider leaving the Badlands. He is tired of a life of killing for the Lord. As night falls, Sunny returns to Vale's house but hesitates to open the door. Just as he is about to leave, he notices a car parked in the middle of the road and senses danger. Four armed guards appear, and a fierce battle is about to begin. Four assassins leap up and attack Sunny using his first skill, Empty Sky Slash. Sunny blocks the damage. Then, with his second skill, Lightning Speed, he swiftly moves to one of the assassins and knocks him out with one strike. Facing two attackers, Sunny uses a blocking roundhouse kick to fend them off while searching for an opportunity. He then uses his ultimate skill, two heavens, one flow, to knock back the two attackers. The remaining three attackers try to surround Sunny, but he defeats them one by one. Suddenly, an assassin with two swords jumped down from the rooftop. It's clear he is the leader of the assassins. His speed is impressive, and he manages to wound Sunny's thigh. Sunny, feeling his stamina waning, focuses on dodging and defending. <laughs> Two of them fight to a draw. During the alley battle, Sunny's knife is accidentally knocked away. They fight from outside to inside a house and then back outside. When the assassin leader attempts a flying strike, Sunny manages to block it and kicks him away. Finally, with superior skill, Sunny defeats the assassin leader by slashing his neck. A woman emerges from the car. She is the widow, one of the seven barons. She straightforwardly asks Sunny to bring MK to her. Sunny refuses. But the widow seems to understand his thoughts and tells him to change his mind and come to her. On the other hand MK gets Gabriel's residence from his best friend Bale in order to retrieve the necklace. Sneaking into the castle at night, he enters Gabriel's room and finds the necklace. But as he turns around, Gabriel appears behind him and catches him in the act. Lydia, Gabriel's mother, also arrives. She seems to know something about the necklace but remains silent. Gabriel decides to publicly execute MK the next day, after returning to the castle. Sonny secretly finds MK. MK asks him to promise to find his mother and tell her that he has been looking for her. Sonny refuses and cuts MK's ankle chain, telling him to do it himself. As Sonny leaves, he warns MK to be careful and not get caught again, as it would mean certain death. However, all of his actions are observed by Lydia. Just as he returns to his quarters, Sonny is informed that the Lord wants to see him. He didn't want Sonny to have any problems. He arranged for Sonny to move to live closer to him. And although Sonny didn't want to, it wasn't good enough to disobey the Lords. Late at night, Jade unexpectedly visits Gabriel's room, and it's not difficult to guess what happens next. As MK escapes through the secret passage, he successfully reaches the outside of the city, only to face a more dangerous journey ahead. One of the most ruthless women I've ever seen, a killer wielding a flying axe suddenly attacks. The widow dodges quickly, but his own men are killed instantly. Enraged. The widow pulls out two daggers from her body and swiftly throws them, instantly killing another man. She then swiftly pulls out more knives and engages in close combat with the remaining killers. Her blade skills are sharp and precise, demonstrating her mastery. Most of the killers are quickly dispatched, and the few remaining ones try to attack together. The widow performs a spinning Thomas, knocking them all to the ground, facing one of the killers. The widow unleashes a furious onslaught, and another, frightened, tries to flee but is swiftly caught and killed by the widow. She confronts the last surviving killer, who reveals that Quinn's son, Gabriel, hired them. The widow single-handedly eliminates the entire team of killers. Meanwhile, MK continues his escape to the west and seems to enter another baron's territory. A young girl appears, and as MK watches from a distance, she suddenly appears behind him, weapon against his neck, demanding to know why he is watching her. MK explains that he is a farmer, separated from his parents and being chased by mercenaries. The girl, feeling pity, gives him some food and introduces herself as Tilda. Suddenly, the sound of hunting dogs in the distance makes MK panic and flee. Tilda immediately called out to him and asked him to come with her. At this time, Gabriel and Sonny came with a large number of Scissor's army. But Sonny said that in front of them was the Widow's territory, and they couldn't take the team in or it would cause strife. Gabriel reluctantly agrees and withdraws. MK is brought back to the Widow's territory by Tilda, not realizing that he Widow is Tilda's mother to whom she reports that she has brought back a new person. Meanwhile, Quinn learns of MK's escape and shrewdly suggests that there must be a traitor in the city. Gabriel vows to find the traitor, but Quinn reveals the attack on the widow and the former regent the night before, stating that he will not spare anyone who acts without authorization. It is clear that he suspects Gabriel's involvement. Elsewhere, the widow becomes suspicious of MK's claim to be a farmer and asks if he has seen a boy wearing a necklace. Fortunately, 
MK calmly denies ever seeing such a boy. Outside, the widow has gathered a group of mercenaries to help her fight against Quinn, offering them territory in return. However, the leader of the mercenaries doubts that they can defeat Quinn with just a group of women. The widow decides to let her daughter fight one of the mercenaries. If she wins, they will cooperate. If she loses, they can do as they please with her. The leader agrees, sending a tall man to fight. However, within two moves, the man's neck is easily snapped by the widow's daughter. Impressed, the leader agrees to the deal. And MK witnesses it all. Meanwhile, Sunny is summoned by the Baron to relax outside the city. They visit a doctor for Quinn's frequent headaches, coincidentally veils adoptive parents, while Sunny and Vale's mother chat outside. Quinn's test results come back, he has advanced brain cancer and could die at any moment. Quinn insists the doctor keep it secret because many people are eyeing his position. The doctor agrees to keep it confidential, but Quinn knows that only dead men can keep secrets. He orders Sunny to kill the couple when they leave. Sunny refuses to kill Vale's parents, and Quinn threatens him with a knife. However, Sunny remains unmoved. Quinn ultimately decides to do it himself and orders Sunny to burn down the house afterward. Unable to bear the sight of the dead couple, Sunny kneels helplessly on the ground. That night, Sunny tells Vale that Quinn killed her parents and promises to take her and the baby away. M.K., who transforms into a superhuman when he bleeds, is wanted by the widow to use his powers to rule the Badlands. The widow suspects M.K. is this boy and asks Tilda to verify his identity. When Tilda tries to harm him, M.K. is defenseless. However, after spending time with him, Tilda develops feelings for M.K. and decides not to hurt him. She cuts her own palm and smears the blood on M.K.'s face to deceive her mother. As night falls, M.K. feels it's unsafe to stay and asks Tilda to help him leave. She takes him to her mother's room, where there's a secret passage left by the previous Baron. While they search, the widow arrives with the leader of the mercenaries. In a moment of desperation, Tilda kisses M.K., angering the widow, who wants to exile M.K. from the city. The mercenary leader, however, has his own agenda he plans to cash in on Quinn's bounty on M.K. The next morning, Gabriel reports to his father that a group of mercenaries stole their opium and there's a hideout in a distant warehouse. Sonny and Gabriel are sent to investigate. Meanwhile, MK is in a mercenary's car, armed with a dart given by Tilda. When Sonny and Gabriel enter the warehouse, they find rows of crates labeled as opium, but they are empty. Suddenly, a large group of mercenaries surround them. It turns out they fell into the widow and the mercenary's trap. Gabriel is hung by an iron chain, and Sonny is surrounded by enemies. Sonny tries to dodge and find openings to attack, but facing a group armed with axes, he is hit hard in the chest and nearly crushed. However, he manages to turn the tide by using the environment to his advantage. Just as Gabriel is about to die, Sonny cuts the chain and saves him, as Sonny checks on Gabriel. The mercenary leader hits him from behind with a stick and then tries to strangle him with an iron rod. In the nick of time, MK appears and saves Sonny. After explaining the situation, MK confesses that he knows the location of his hometown, Azra, but he can't go back alone. He hopes Sonny can take him and Vale's child out of the Badlands and back home. Sonny believes Quinn won't let them leave easily, but he has a plan. He decides to pretend to obey Quinn, train MK to control his power, and leave with Vale and the child. After the attack, Quinn prepares to launch a final attack on the widow, despite being old and ill. Quinn is the best swordsman in the Badlands. He leads the Scissors army to raid the Widow's stronghold. Sunny instructs all the Junior army to stand guard at the periphery, and the unprepared girls are caught off guard. Quinn leads his men into the fray, demonstrating his skill by swiftly dispatching three assailants. Meanwhile, Sunny is engaged in a fight with another group of attackers in a different room. M.K., on the other hand, sneaks into the Widow's room. He had noticed a book with a similar pattern to his necklace when he was with Tilda searching for the secret passage. He wants to find out what information the book holds. On the opposite side, the widow plans to escape through the secret passage with a few of her female disciples but is confronted by Quinn, who had been waiting for her. She hands the key to the secret chamber to one of her disciples and prepares to face Quinn. Quinn uses his formidable strength and ferocity to force the widow into retreat. Despite losing her sword, the widow fights back fiercely using agility and finesse to counter Quinn's brute force. She even manages to slap him several times. Quinn, enraged, delivers a powerful flying kick that knocks the widow to the ground. As he is about to strike a fatal blow, he suddenly experiences a severe headache, screaming in agony. Seeing an opportunity, the widow prepares to counterattack, but Sunny arrives just in time to defuse the situation. The widow quickly escapes through the secret passage, and Quinn emerges victorious. Despite losing a significant number of clippers, they have gained control of the widow's territory and its vast oil fields. Back at the base, MK shows the book to Sunny, 
who nervously hides it and begins training MK. MK is disdainful of Sunny's training methods and questions why he is not teaching him self-defense. Sunny decides to take MK to see a master, who turns out to be his former mentor and the former regent. Waldo. Waldo offers to spar with MK, but MK underestimates him and is swiftly defeated. Afterward, MK listens attentively to Waldo's teachings. On the other hand, Jade watched Gabriel unconscious and called in Sonny's girlfriend Vale to help with the diagnosis and treatment. When she learns that Gabriel will be given a craniotomy, her mother Lydia is strongly against it. As the widow and her disciples flee to a long-abandoned refuge, she recalls a woman named Esta whom she had placed in the red light district. She instructs Tilda to notify Esta to leave immediately. Meanwhile, Gabriel successfully undergoes surgery and recovers. Much to Quinn's apparent gratitude, he promises to help find the culprit responsible for killing Vale's parents and reveals he knows about her relationship with Sunny. Gabriel suddenly regains consciousness, and Vale prepares to give him some water. However, Quinn intervenes and takes the cup from her hand. Who set you up? After learning about the widow's insider, Quinn sends Sunny to the red light district. Sunny kicks open the door and finds Zesta in the middle of a transaction. The man gets angry and tries to teach him a lesson but gets slapped down by Sunny. Esta immediately lifts up the covers to block his view and quickly pulls out a dagger and jumps at Sunny, giving him a direct hit as the two begin to fight in the small room. Meanwhile, Tilda, who has arrived to deliver a message, sees MK in his clippers uniform guarding the area. She mistakenly slaps him, thinking he is the wrong person. However, MK explains the situation to her. Suddenly, Esta and Sunny burst out of the room, surprising everyone downstairs. They engage in a chase, with Esta quickly climbing upstairs. Sunny, using his agility, manages to catch up to Esta, and they resume their fight, realizing she is no match for Sunny. Esta refuses to disclose the widow's whereabouts despite being interrogated. Unable to escape, she jumps off the building, meeting a tragic end. Watching this unfold, MK urges Tilda to leave immediately. Back in the city, the injured Sonny seeks comfort from his girlfriend. While MK realizes that he is the person Sonny wants to take away from the Badlands, while Sonny is recovering, MK sees a book on Vale's table and wonders if it holds answers to his questions. The next day, Quinn meets with Sonny to discuss their attack on the widow, which has angered other barons. They are asked to negotiate, with the barons possibly aiming to execute Quinn. He seeks an alliance with another unpopular baron, Jacoby, whose regent, Zypher, happens to be Sonny's ex-girlfriend. That's how Sonny came to the meeting place as a middleman. Zypher gets straight to the point, mentioning that several barons want Quinn removed and propose to divide the widow's oil fields among themselves. Sonny disagrees with this proposal and hopes Zypher can persuade Jacoby to meet Quinn. However, Zypher only agrees to help if Sonny agrees to reconcile with her, which Sonny declines. Despite their efforts, no deal is reached. Meanwhile, MK sneaks into Sonny's room in the castle and finds the widow's book. He then goes to Vale's house, hoping she can help decipher the text. However, Vale admits that she cannot understand the writing either. Quinn suddenly arrives, but fortunately, he doesn't notice MK or the book. His purpose for coming is to ask Vale for help with his illness. Faced with the killer of her parents, Vale must make a difficult choice. A girl, disheveled and covered in blood, runs through the woods. A car approaches, and she runs towards it for help. However, when two men get out to check on her, they are suddenly killed by throwing weapons. The perpetrator is revealed to be the widow. At this moment, a scissor army was escorted up by her female disciples and then tackled by widow with a hoover. The car was transporting goods for Jacoby, and the widow uses this incident to instigate conflict between Jacoby and Quinn's forces. On the other side, Sonny continues to train MK. Quinn finds Sonny and asks if he has figured out why the widow wants MK. Sonny says he is still unclear. Quinn then tells Sonny to be prepared as various factions will soon take action. At the Widow's camp, the female disciples accidentally turn on a record player, which helps to relax their tense emotions. They start dancing happily, but the Widow arrives and smashes the record player, reprimanding them for their behavior. Tilda, however, expresses her disagreement with the Widow's recent actions, believing she is becoming more ruthless to achieve her goals. The Widow defends her actions, stating that desperate times call for desperate measures. Meanwhile, MK realizes he must intensify his training. He spends the night practicing on a wooden stake, while Sonny watches from a distance. MK takes out a small knife, seemingly attempting to unleash his dark power, but ultimately decides against it. In the castle, Vale is treating Quinn's illness. She suggests using poison as a cure, but Quinn starts to suspect that Vale might be trying to kill him. Vale suggests that if her father were still alive, there might be another solution. She advises Quinn to consider this. The next morning, Sonny takes MK out of the city to a secluded place in order for MK to control his dark power. 
Sonny believes he must release it. Sonny cuts his own arm and, as MK's eyes turn black, he encourages him to stay calm and control the power. He suddenly uses the dark palm technique, sending Sonny flying and knocking him unconscious against a wall. MK also collapses, exhausted and unconscious. The two awaken again and Sonny wants to try again. But MK tells Sonny to stop. I'm afraid I might hurt you. At night, Quinn summons Gabriel due to the widow's interference. Quinn has had a falling out with Jacoby. Quinn sends his son out of the city to negotiate a meeting place with Jacoby, and Gabriel comes up with a plan of his own. On the other side, MK goes to Vale's place to get the book. Sonny also arrives and learns that MK doesn't actually know how to get home. He deceived Sonny. With the situation unstable and Quinn's condition worsening, Sonny must find another way to leave. The next morning, Gabriel meets with Zypher. Gabriel reveals that they were not the ones who intercepted the goods and arranges a meeting place for the leaders. Before leaving, he stops Zypher and reveals his plan. Meanwhile, Sonny seeks advice from Waldo on how to leave the Badlands. Out of concern for his apprentice, Waldo gives him a token to give to a man called the River King, the only person who can help them leave. On the day of the leaders' meeting, both sides bring out their elites, fearing any mishaps. M.K., who is scouting from afar, sees a mysterious woman and shouts a warning when he sees her reach for a weapon. However, Sonny stops him just in time. Quinn believes Jacoby is trying to kill him and a fight breaks out. Sonny pursues the thrown weapon and, when Zypher tries to stop him, Sonny defeats him and forces him to flee. M.K. catches up to Tilda and questions why she helps her mother do these things. Tilda refuses to explain and slashes M.K. with a throwing weapon while escaping. This causes M.K. to transform into his berserker state again, nearly killing Tilda. However, she manages to call out M.K.'s name, seemingly awakening him from his rage. Sonny arrives and witnesses the scene. M.K. collapses unconscious, and Tilda takes the opportunity to escape. With both sides suffering heavy casualties, Quinn is surrounded by Jacoby and Zypher. Sonny arrives in time, presents evidence, and reveals that the widow was the one who instigated the conflict, stopping the fight. Jacoby says the other leaders must concede, but Quinn must deal with the widow first. Returning to the city, Sonny discovers that the widow has attacked in their absence, causing massive losses. Quinn vows to eliminate the widow. Meanwhile, at the widow's camp, Gabriel is brought before her. Unexpectedly, Zypher is also working for the widow. He asks Gabriel to do something for her, capture MK, so he can replace his father as the leader. Gabriel agrees willingly. The next day, Sonny finds the River King and presents the token from Waldo. The River King agrees to help Sonny and his companions leave the Badlands, but on one condition, recently, 28 laborers on his ship were brutally killed, and it was identified as the work of the boy on this wanted poster. The River King requires Sonny to deal with this person and bring his head as payment. Sonny realizes that MK must have been responsible for the killings while in his berserker state. He must now decide what to do. He's tired of this life and Sonny has arranged for him and his family to leave, but he needs to hand over MK's head. On this day, he is ordered to lead the Scissor army deep into the jungle to find the widow. Sonny suddenly pulls MK aside. As he discovers the ground is covered in traps, he jumps and kicks a tree, causing a vibration that drops fruit and triggers the hidden traps. At that moment there was a scream from the side. One of the scissors army had his ankle clipped, and they could only rest in place for the time being. Meanwhile, in the city, Gabriel finds his savior Waldo. He wants to overthrow his father, Quinn, and seeks Waldo's support. However, Waldo remains neutral stating he will support whoever wins. Gabriel also seeks Waldo's help to unlock the secret of the necklace he carries. Waldo suggests his grandfather might have the answers. At night, Gabriel visits his grandfather's territory and learns that the place mentioned on the necklace, Azra, doesn't exist. It's a fictional place people aspire to. After Gabriel leaves, his grandfather orders him to be eliminated. In another part of the Badlands, Sonny arranges for some injured men to rest while MK takes the night watch. In the dead of night, Tilda suddenly appears. The two discuss the events at the graveyard. Tilda reveals that she learned from her mother that every time MK uses his power, it shortens his lifespan. She advises MK to leave as soon as possible and not to be used by anyone else. But Sonny suddenly appears and captures Tilda, who had injured him earlier. Back in the city, Sonny reports to Quinn, who orders him to find the widow's whereabouts. Sonny quickly goes to the dungeon where he ties Tilda to an execution chair and interrogates her about the widow's location. Tilda refuses to talk and even spits in Sonny's face, enraging him enough to prepare to torture her. The widow suddenly arrives, and a fight breaks out between her and Sonny. Despite the widow's martial prowess, she is overwhelmed by Sonny's aggressive attacks and is ultimately kicked into the next room, finding herself in an armory. The widow picks up a meteor hammer to continue the fight. As they battle, Sonny's sword is knocked away, 
so he resorts to using a shield to block attacks, constantly switching weapons. Meanwhile, MK takes the opportunity to open the cell door and free Tilda. However, another clipper attacks MK from behind and locks him in the cell, where he brutally beats Tilda. During the fight, the widow is accidentally cut across the abdomen by Sunny and falls to the ground, unable to move. Just when Sunny is about to kill, Tilda's life is also on the line, only to see MK open his palm and suddenly go berserk. With a slap, he shakes the cell door open, and the junior army's life is lost on the spot. Sunny, seeing this, leaves the widow and prepares to deal with MK. Tilda takes the chance to escape with the widow, and MK, after returning to normal, collapses again. Sunny rushes to pursue the widow, but they have already vanished. Quinn witnesses everything MK has done. The next morning, Sunny goes out of the city to find the River King. He notices a resemblance between the Dead Clipper and MK, and decides to use the Dead Clipper's head to deceive the River King. The River King is impressed with his efficiency and decides to take them out of the Badlands that night. However, a major event has occurred in the city. Gabriel, in order to better deal with his father, Quinn, frames Sunny for conspiring with the Widow. Quinn believes his son and decides to arrest Sunny. Quinn realizes that MK can replace him and also senses that Sunny intends to leave him. Sunny, unaware of the situation, is summoned to a chapel, where he is arrested by clippers. Quinn goes to the dungeon where Sunny is held and demands that Sunny reveal all of MK's secrets. Quinn wants to groom MK into a killing machine, but Sunny refuses to cooperate and vows to kill Quinn first once he's out. As night falls, Waldo visits Sunny. But the guard refuses to let him in. Waldo easily subdues the guard and unlocks Sonny's chains, urging him to leave with his girlfriend as there will be a coup that night. He reveals that Quinn has taken MK to the Red Light District, where the Widow has set an ambush. It turns out Waldo is also working for the Widow. Quinn and MK arrive at the ambush site, which is eerily empty, sensing something is wrong. Quinn remains unfazed and demands the ambushing party to reveal themselves. Jacoby and Zypher appear. But to Quinn's surprise, his son Gabriel is among them. Quinn finally understands that Gabriel is the true traitor. Quinn tries to persuade Jacoby to stop, warning that fighting will only lead to mutual destruction, benefiting the widow. However, everyone is determined to kill Quinn. Quinn draws a knife and slashes MK's back, causing MK to transform into his berserker dark form. Unaware of the extent of MK's power, Jacoby rushes to attack him but is quickly beaten back and sent flying. Quinn prepares to watch the show from an alley but is surprised to see Sonny arrive. Sonny stabs Quinn in the stomach, telling him he will be his final tattoo. In a flash, MK dispatches everyone as he is about to kill Gabriel. Sonny grabs him from behind to stop him, but is flung away by MK. Suddenly, a car arrives behind him, and three monks disembark. One of them leaps forward to confront MK, dodging and using a special technique to counter MK's attacks. It seems they have a method to deal with MK and MK falls into unconsciousness again. The three monks prepare to take MK away. Sunny intervenes, saying, if you want to take him, you'll have to get past me first. Two of the monks immediately engage Sunny in combat. Despite facing a two-on-one situation, Sunny holds his own, displaying both offensive and defensive prowess. The fight ends in a stalemate. The monk in the middle puts down MK and challenges Sunny alone. Using tiger-style kung fu, his powerful attacks quickly overwhelm Sunny culminating in a devastating kick that sends Sunny flying. However, Sunny retrieves a pair of swords, connecting their hilts to form a double-bladed weapon, and resumes his attack. The monk, perhaps unaccustomed to such a formidable opponent, eventually gets cut by Sunny, realizing they cannot waste any more time. The three monks simultaneously unleash a wave of dark energy, extinguishing all the lights around them. It turns out they possess the same abilities as MK, forming a defensive formation. The monks simultaneously kick at Sunny. Despite putting up a fierce fight and drawing blood from one of the monks, Sunny is eventually overpowered. The monks use their powers to knock him unconscious, while MK is placed in a wooden box and taken away in a car. When Sunny regains consciousness, he finds himself bound and captured by River King, who has seen through his deception. As punishment, River King plans to sell Sunny to a place more suitable for him. Meanwhile, MK wakes up in the wooden box. Unaware of his whereabouts, he despairs and roars in frustration, realizing that his journey has only just begun. The first season concludes. If you enjoyed this series, please subscribe to my channel as I will continue to update for the second season. I'm a movie enthusiast. And until next time.